Good morning. Welcome to Salem Lutheran Church. Uh, before we begin, let's just take a moment and greet the people around us. So say hi to everyone. All right, so uh, just a reminder to everyone, in front of you we do have those connection cards if everyone could fill them out. Uh, if you happen to fill it out before the offering, you can put it in the offering plate. I realize it's not a lot of time, so if you want to stay afterwards and fill it out quick and then put it on the back table, that's totally fine too. So um, with that, today we're going to continue through the Pentecost season. And today we're going to see that God provides ministers to share his word, but, but not just ministers we're also going to see how God has uses everyone to share his word. And yeah, that includes you. That includes me. So let's begin our worship this morning by, I almost said this evening. I don't know why. I was thinking of fireworks, I guess. Um, this morning, within this place, your word is planted. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In that name, and with that faith, as dear children approaching a loving parent, as sinners redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, as believers filled with the Holy Spirit, let us confess our sins to God. Most merciful God, we have been unworthy and disobedient children. We have ignored our Father's admonitions, disregarded our Savior's instructions, and grieved the Holy Spirit. We are not worthy to be called children of God, but we beg you of your fatherly compassion by your saving work at your inviting call to have mercy on us and grant us your forgiveness. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And to those who believe in Jesus Christ, the Heavenly Father gives the Holy Spirit, that they may be called children of God. Rejoice in the Lord. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join together with our song of praise.
Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Continue to send your messengers to preserve your people in true peace, that by the preaching of your word, your church may be kept free from all harm and danger. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson for this morning takes place in Ezekiel chapters 2 and 3. And this is also going to be our our message for today. So even though a whole bunch of confusing things are going to happen, I'm not going to talk about them now because I'm going to talk about them later. Uh, So here we go. It reads, Then I looked, and I saw a hand stretched out to me. In it was a scroll which he unrolled before me. On both sides of it were written words of lament and mourning and woe. And he said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll. Then go and speak to the people of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. Then he said to me, Son of man, eat this scroll I am giving you, and fill your stomach with it. So I ate it, and it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. He then said to me, Son of man, go now to the people of Israel and speak my words to them. You are not being sent to a people of obscure speech and strained language, but to the people of Israel. Not to many peoples of obscure speech and strained language whose words you cannot understand. Surely, if I had sent you to them, they would have listened to you. But the people of Israel are not willing to listen to you because they are not willing to listen to me. For all the Israelites are hardened and obstinate. But I will make you as unyielding, as hardened as they are. I'll make your forehead like the hardest stone, harder than flint. Do not be afraid of them or terrified by them, though they are a rebellious people. And he said to me, Son of man, listen carefully and take to heart all the words I speak to you. Go now to your people in exile and speak to them. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, whether they listen or fail to listen. This is the word of our Lord. Let's join together and sing, O Church, Arise.
second lesson for today is found in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. And in them, well, just as we see that, that Christ is an example for all of us, we see in our, our lesson this morning that those called to serve God are to be as good of examples as they can be to those around them. It reads, To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. This is the word of our Lord. Our gospel lesson is from Luke chapter 10 today, and it kind of jumps right off of what we just talked about. As Christ is an example to ministers and those called to serve, and as they're supposed to be an example to, to everyone else, well, now we see other people coming in to share God's word. We see that there's a call to 72, and, and the role is a little bit different. It's not the same as the disciples. It doesn't seem to be their full-time job. And yet these 72 go out and preach God's word anyway. And what a great reminder to all of us that we too should share God's word. Please stand out of respect for the gospel message. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. In other words, don't dilly-dally. There's, there's work to be done. And then when you enter the house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. And when you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Now this next part then reminds us not to take offense when someone rejects God's word because they're not rejecting us, right? They're, they're rejecting God. It says, whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me, but whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of our God. Please be seated. All right, it's that time again. If there's any kids out there for the kids' devotion. And if not, I'm going to do it anyway. You know how I roll. There we go. I see some coming up. Come on up. I'm just going to set some things up quick. Do any of you guys still have, uh, I don't know if these still, things are still around. Do you guys have any of these cars at home or have you ever played with these? Yeah? Okay, so it's still, it's still an okay toy? Good to know. Okay. Now, this is something we played with as a kids all the time. And we, what you do is you kind of attach the tracks here. You attach them. 
then you can put the car on here and see if I can get Micah from here. Right? And they kind of go down the track. But they go kind of wherever the track is set, right? Um, as you saw, that one pretty much followed the path. But, but what would happen if I did this? Do you think that's going to work? Should we try it anyway? Yeah, let's see what happens. Pick one. What do you want to try it with? Try that one? All right, here we go. Ready? So uh, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, not going not gonna to go well. But let's, you know, for the sake of experimenting, let's see what happens. Oh. Oh, no. It crashed. <laughs> and that makes sense, right? Because there's no more track. It, it, it had nowhere to go. Now, in our message, God is going to tell us how we're supposed to share the word with others. But at the same time, he wants us to, to protect ourselves, to defend ourselves. And how we do that is we spend time in his word. And whenever we spend time in his word or you come to church or you're maybe in Sunday school or school or whatever, and you're hearing about Jesus, what's going on is God is building a track in your life. Because he doesn't want you to, to, to crash, right? Instead, he wants you to be spiritually guided on the right path to see Jesus for who he is. He wants you to get safely to your goal, right? Your goal of, of heaven and to see Jesus. So, because it's a lot smoother with the track. So let's pray and, and ask God to help us stay on that, that track while reaching out to others and bring them on that track as well. Dear God, there are so many people out there that, that need to hear your word. And God, we ask you to help us, help us be bold to share that word. Help us to, to share the word that's going to create paths in their life that leads them to you. Because we don't want them to crash spiritually. We want them to be saved in your name. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for joining me today. We'll continue uh, with our next song, O Christians, Haste.
In May of 2014, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell took to Twitter for a special event called Hashtag Ask the Commish. He's going to take time out of his busy schedule to answer the questions for National Football League fans. And, and he was really excited for this groundbreaking event. He was pumped to be able to give people a behind-the-scenes look of, of everything that goes on uh, in football. It did not go well at all. <laughs> Apparently, when you give people the opportunity to ask any question, they actually will ask any question. I looked through a bunch, and I, I brought some of the ones that stood out to me. Uh, so the, some of them are, are mean, some of them are funny, and most of them, if not all of them, have like nothing to do with football. So here are several that stood out to me. The first one, is a hot dog a sandwich? This one's a little bit meaner. Uh, do you try not to think about the blood on your hands, or do you just stuff money into the hole where your soul used to be? Ouch. On a scale of one to infinity, how much do you enjoy the fact that working class fans have been priced out of attending games? Two questions. Ever had insensitive, potentially career-ending remarks secretly recorded? Second question. If no, would you, please? Uh, here's another random one. Would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? And here's my favorite. I laughed really hard at this one. I probably shouldn't have, but I loved it anyway. Uh, here's what it was. If you were stranded on a deserted island with only one book to keep you company, wouldn't that be better for everyone? <laughs> like I said, it did not go well. At the end of the event, someone asked him, can I be commissioner for a day? And Goodell responded with, from seeing some of these tweets, are you sure you want to? <laughs> now, I can't quite figure out the reason, but for some reason next year, he didn't hold the same event, and it died right there. It didn't go well. He tried something, and it failed miserably. Now, as much as I would like to say that I, can, I can't relate to that at all, uh, unfortunately, I, I can. A lot more than I'd like to admit. And I think many Christians can. Today, we're going to see Ezekiel in a similar spot where parts of his ministry are not going to go that well. And yet, Christ still turns Ezekiel into a minister to proclaim his word. And that's what we're going to ask God to, to do for us today, to help us to share his word. Now, before our text for today, the, the prophet Ezekiel is receiving visions from God. And as a 30-year-old man, Ezekiel is given this like peek into something similar to God's glory. And just this small peek is enough to put him face down in, in fear, uh, in reverence, and a whole bunch of other emotions. And God has a message for Ezekiel, but first, loving God that he is, he tenderly brings Ezekiel back up to his feet. And then he tells him, that Ezekiel is going to have to go and speak words to his people. But not just any words, the words that God will give him. And so God tells Ezekiel to open his mouth and eat whatever words that God gives him. Now this is where our text jumps in. This is where we, we pick up the pace here, where we jump in. Uh, Ezekiel is speaking of what he saw at this point. And he says, Then I looked, and I saw a hand stretched out to me. And in it was a scroll, which he unrolled before me, and on both sides of it were written words of lament and mourning and woe. Now hold on a second. Words of lament and mourning and woe? That can't be good. God, are you sure you want me to, to eat this? Chapter 3, verse 1, it says, And he said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll, and then go and speak to the people of Israel. God reveals the, the point of his words. You see, these words are part of God's word. And God wants Ezekiel to digest these words, to, to make them his own, uh, more a part of himself than even his own body. And once the prophet has them for himself, he's to go and share those exact same words to the people. He was going to preach the words of lament and mourning and woe. 
Now, why those words, right? It seems like such a disappointing, discouraging message. Well, at the time, Israel was rejecting God. And they figured God didn't matter. His rules were just interfering with the way they wanted to, to live their lives. And uh, so they believed everything was going to be okay because they thought they were special. And so they figured they could keep spitting on God and his promises, and everything would be fantastic because in their mind, they were untouchable because they were God's people. But unfortunately, at this time, they needed some tough love. They had gone off the track, and it wouldn't have been loving to to let them stay there. Instead, the loving thing to do was to tell them if they kept on a path away from God, it was not going to end well for them. Ezekiel was to eat and then preach those words of lament and mourning and woe to tell them these things. And we'll talk more about about the preaching part, the sharing of God's word later, but I want to jump back to the, the eating part now. I just want to give you some background information first. And so Ezekiel, he understands what he must do, so he opens his mouth, and God gives him the scroll to eat. Now at this point, in verse 3, God again says, Son of man, eat this scroll I am giving you, and fill your stomach with it. Now maybe, maybe God is just repeating the instructions because they're really important. Um, But every time I read this, I, I just wonder if Ezekiel is hesitating with the scroll next to his lips, if he's going like, do I really want to eat this filled with words of lament and mourning and and woe? I can relate. When you read through the Bible, there are are many things that are uplifting and wonderful, things you agree with wholeheartedly, but there's also going to be things that puzzle you, that confuse you, and you struggle with, and maybe you don't agree with at, at all, at least at first. And there are going to be words in the Bible that, that you don't want to eat. And maybe, maybe it's struggling with a, the concept of forgiveness. Like, God, are you kidding me? You want me to forgive him after what he did to me? Maybe it's the, the concept of life that, that has you struggling. And God, what do you mean abortion is wrong? Doesn't God want to give people the choice? Or maybe God's word will even contradict today's popular opinion on marriage. And just like in the Garden of Eden... The devil will try to get you to question God. Did God really say that? And if he did, can you trust him? Have you guys ever eaten a food that, you know, looked terrible, looked disgusting, but was actually really good? Yeah? Believe it or not, when I was a kid, I didn't like orange juice. I didn't like orange juice. Um, And I convinced myself that I wasn't going to ever like orange juice. Now, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was the the texture or the smell or the fact that, you know, most of it wasn't produced in something that looked like a soda can. I I don't know. But I had convinced myself I didn't like it until I drank more of it. And as I continued drinking it, I, I realized that I actually really liked it. And the more I drank it, the more I understood how great it was. And all my my silly arguments I had against it, they kind of just melted away. And now I find myself getting a glass of OJ when I need a pick-me-up for a long day. How does this relate, right? Why are you talking about orange juice? Well, being naturally sinful, of course, we're not going to naturally agree with everything God says in his word. We're not, because he's perfect. It's all right. We're, We're not perfect. And so... Original, we're going to make all these, these dumb arguments to try and protect the, the sinful lifestyles we enjoy so much. Or we're naturally going to try and ignore the parts that, that show us our sins because we don't want to hear our faults or words of lament or mourning or woe. We want instant gratification. We want to hear that we're perfect. But often what we originally want isn't what we need or, or what's satisfying in the end. Look at what happens when Ezekiel eats the scroll. Whether he hesitated or not, notice that he doesn't take like a a little nibble of it. He doesn't pick and choose which parts to eat, which parts he thinks will be good, which parts won't be. But instead, he knows it's all good, and he eats all of it. And even the words of lament and mourning and woe, they're not disgusting. Instead, all of it, as verse 3 puts it, tasted as sweet as honey in his mouth. 
And we look at God and go, God, you, you sure you want me to eat your word? God goes, yes. Because God's word brings a satisfaction unheard of elsewhere in our world. Well, things like drug and pornography, which feel good at first, leave you empty and unsatisfied over time. God's word fills you the more you partake of it. Even the tough words to hear are full of righteousness. And all of God's word tastes sweeter when you see God's love through them. When you see that you have been turned from sinner to saint through Jesus' actions. Even the words you didn't originally like will become satisfying to you in Christ. Like a delicious meal, God says, eat, eat the word, savor it, devour it in your studies again and again, take joy even in the justice of our God, because then you can revel in the richness of his mercy, you can gobble up the, the goodness of the gospel message of a savior, and you can taste and see that the Lord is good. Eat the word, eat and be satisfied. Now, in our text, after Ezekiel eats God's delicious word, God says to him, Okay, son of man, now go to the people of Israel and speak my words to them. And that makes sense, right? Because God told him to, to do that earlier. So it makes sense. He knows that's coming. Um, but then he gives Ezekiel some good news. He says, You're not going to be sent to a people of obscure speech and strange language, but to the people of Israel. And that's great news because Ezekiel isn't going to have to learn a, a new language. He's going to be among his own people. He's, he's going to be able to communicate with them as easy as, as you and I can communicate with one another. But then God gives him some, some bad news. He says, now if I sent you to those people that have a different language, they would have listened to you. But the people of Israel, they're not going to listen to you at all because they are hardened and obstinate. It's kind of a depressing message to hear, isn't it? That no one's going to listen to Ezekiel, at least for this part of his ministry. Later on, Ezekiel, after Israel falls, Ezekiel is going to continue preaching. He'll get to preach the gospel, and, and a remnant will be saved. But for right now, in Ezekiel's ministry, no one's going to listen to him. Now, let me tell you, it is infuriating to, to speak and have nobody listen to you. Uh, to try your absolute hardest and for it to not seem to be worth a lick. To continue sacrificing of yourself over and over again just so someone can take advantage of you one more time. And, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You've all, you've all been there. Maybe you're trying to tell your kids something and it, they're just not having it. Or, or maybe you're trying to talk to your spouse and they won't get off the, the phone screen. They're not listening to anything that you're saying. Or maybe kids, maybe, maybe you did the right thing and you're trying to, to tell your parents the truth about something and they don't believe you. Your words are falling on, on deaf ears. And it's hard because it's hard to do the right thing when you're not instantly rewarded with success. It's even harder when you aren't rewarded with success at all. And we can quickly become discouraged and grow lax in our faith or our faithfulness. For encouragement, I, I want to point you to the last several verses in our text. God doesn't just leave you in these times. When you feast on God's word each week, he makes you stronger. Just as people who don't listen can be hard-hearted or so hard-headed that the word doesn't get through their thick skull, God says, I'm going to make your faith harder. I'm going to make your faith stronger. Through his word, he can give you a diamond-hard faith so that you can stand against adversity because God is with you, you neither have to be afraid nor terrified. And we often get upset when people don't listen to us or people don't flock to our churches at the slightest mention of, of Jesus from our lips. And now it's, it's good, it's good for us always to, to double check what we're doing, to adapt, to try and make sure we reach as many people as possible without changing his word. But God offers another encouragement that is perhaps the most important as we share the word of Jesus. He says, he doesn't always call us to be successful, but God calls us to be faithful. He calls us to share his word. I want to tell you one last story this morning. Um, this is part of the reason I can relate to uh, Roger Goodell from the beginning. Uh, when I did my first sermon on my own, I wasn't here, it was at a, a different church, and I, I wrote it all on my own, no help from professors, no help from anyone, and I was going to preach it on my own, and I spent, I spent hours and days just trying to get it to be perfect. 
so that everyone could see Jesus and people would be like, wow, you know, I, I see him now. And so I, I spent all this time on it. I gave the sermon. And then afterwards, I, I asked a lady, I was like, hey, how'd it go? And she said, it's okay. You'll do better next time. <laughs> Ooh, right in the feels, right? Um, now, over the years, I've gotten some comments like that, some worse than that, and, you know, that's, that's okay, right? Feedback's good. I know I've had my moments, good ones and bad ones. I've also gotten some really generous comments. But either way, whether it was considered good or considered bad, I know that even on that one, God smiled over all the sermons I was faithful in preaching his word. All of them. And I hope you know that God rejoices whenever you share his word, regardless of whether it succeeds or fails. So please don't let the, the fear of failure or trepidation at how loved ones are going to react to you, don't let that hold you back. Don't let that hold you back. Because God just wants you to share his word. God just wants you to try. And often through his word, he brings about hearts. He brings forth people who love him and are saved. And what a privilege it is to know you get to be a part of that. God wants you to faithfully proclaim the word. And it's, it's really a, a simple equation here. First, make sure to fill up on God's word. Have that delectable meal of his words and, and then take to heart all the words God speaks to you. And then two, faithfully share them. And you may, you may be, I don't know, for you, you may be the most eloquent person in the world when it comes to speaking. Or you might struggle to put together a simple sentence and stumble over all your words. But either way, God is going to work through that. God calls you to be faithful. And regardless, God tells us to say to others, this, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, without, without changing any of his words. This is what the Sovereign Lord says whether people listen or fail to listen. And this is how God will continue to share his word with one another through all of us. Amen. That's the great thing about being part of a family is we don't have to share the gospel message alone, right? It, sometimes it's already hard enough, but it's great when you can draw on each other for encouragement and advice. And so as a group, let's join together and profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we give our, our thank offering to the Lord. And, and remember, if you happen to have a chance to fill out the connection card, you can throw it in the offering plate. Uh, if you haven't had a chance yet, that's okay. Remember, you can fill it out afterwards and put it on the back table.
Please stand as we bring our prayer requests before the Lord. Dear Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it's clear that, that you are the, the one thing that brings us back on track. And you see all things and care for all people. And so we bring these, these requests before you. First of all, we, we thank you. We can see your mercy in, in some of these actions. And we thank you that, that Bonnie Richter's niece, Emily, uh, two and a half years ago, she was diagnosed with cancer. But she finished her last chemo treatment this past week and is now considered cancer-free. We thank you for this. And we ask you to continue to be with her, to grant her strength, health, and peace. God, at the same time, we realize that in this world, not everything is, is goes perfectly. And we ask you to please be with Marlene Finley, uh, who is struggling with a, a lot of health problems at this moment. Please give her the physical and devotional strength that she needs. Please give her minimal pain. And God, please prepare her uh, spiritually, because we don't know if her time is short or perhaps she'll be here for a long time but please prepare her for, for whatever comes. God, we also ask you to, to be with our churches, not just here, but also in Ukraine. Uh, I know since the, all the, the wars going on over there that you know, over time we, we kind of forget what's happening, but, but they don't forget, they're in the thick of things. And so God, please be with those churches in, in Ukraine and, and help them to continue spreading your word where it's needed. God, we also thank you that, that you provide your word all across the world. We thank you that 18 uh, men just finished their seminary training in India, and they're going to go out and, and preach your word to the ends, of, <coughs> the ends of the earth. God, we ask you to give them strength, and please bless their ministries and help them to remain faithful whether people listen or not. God, we also ask you to please be with Jane's brother, Phil. Uh, he had his second leg amputated on, on Friday. Um, and so we ask you to, to give him healing and help him to adjust to this, this new situation. It's not going to be easy, but remind him that his identity wasn't in his body. It's in you. God, we also ask you to, to be with Sarah, my wife's uh, grandpa. Yesterday he fell and broke his hip, and he's in his 90s. And doctors are trying to figure out who can help and what to do. We ask you to give him strength, to help find doctors that, that can help him, that can heal him, um, and always remind him again to, to draw strength from you. Even if his body betrays him, you never will. And God, finally, we also thank you. Um, I, I got my, my test results back. I went over them with a doctor, and, and some of the illnesses are gone, and progress has been made on, on the other ones. And we just thank you for this, this step in the right direction. Um, your mercy always astounds. Your grace is always sufficient. So please continue to give me strength uh, as I continue healing. God, as the United States is, is going to pause to commemorate its anniversary, we think of the many blessings you have made a reality for us. Forgive us our, our many complaints, and we ask you for blessings uh, upon us. Continue to allow us peace and bless all honest endeavors, and do not let our wonderful freedoms be abused or removed. Let justice and right prevail. Place loyalty in the hearts of our citizenry so that all may take an active role to do away with wrong and foster what is right. Above all, preserve our freedom to call upon you and to praise you. God, help us to stay on the right track, to eat your word and to share it with others. And we join together in the words you taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated as we sing, Spread Abroad, O Mighty Word.
As always, it is an honor to, to worship with you. It really is great to be able to share God's word with one another. I got a couple of announcements. Uh, most of them are the same, and I, I ask you to please check out the worship folder, and you can see them. Uh, but two I want to announce is Pastor Wolf is going to be installed on Sunday, July 10th. That's next weekend already. Uh, so if you want to come to that, there's a service at 4 p.m. A meal is following. Uh, if you're coming, there's a sign-up sheet out there, so please sign up. Uh, the other thing that I think is kind of newer on our, our uh, announcements here is the Red Cross Blood Drive is coming up on August 8th. So there's information about how to sign up or, or help with that. Um, with that, it is the 4th of July weekend. So please be safe if you decide to, you know, blow things up in the sky. Um, be careful. At the same time, realize that just as we have freedom in this country, know that God has granted us freedom spiritually. Uh, and that really is the greatest gift of all. Um, so God bless you on your weekend. Make sure to, to come talk to me on your way out and, and just have a great week. Mm -hmm.